Okay, may I introduce you. So Paul is a policy advisor for internationalization in the Ghent University. Uh, he was working as a policy advisor responsible for monitoring and analyzing uh, of data in, inter in internationalization. In this capacity, he advises the Ghent, um, the University of Ghent management in making data informed decision. Together with the colleagues, he created uh, what is here, IQUATIC, an aquatic, okay, and he will explain a little bit more in detail what this is. Uh, this is a tool where available data is brought together in a structural ways in order to improve the quality of international cooperation. He's responsible for reshaping procedures to reduce the administrative burden to students and staff involved in the international mobility. Oh, they think that this will be useful for all of us. Uh, the correct application of ECTS at Ghent University and another area of his is another area of his exper experience. Uh, Paul graduated in uh, Master of Art of Master of Science in EU Studies at Ghent University and started working at his alma mater soon after his graduation. After more than five years at the Office of Counseling, he joined the International Relations Office in Ghent University in May 2012. And today he is with us. Paul, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot for this introduction. And it's my pleasure to be here in, in Istanbul and to talk about this, this tool. Um, I had a session last week at the EIE. This is such a difficult pronunciation, maybe even more difficult than aquatic, um, on this tool. And, and there seems to be a lot of interest because as, as um, when speaking at conferences with, with people working in international relations, managing partnerships, I hope this is also uh, an answer uh, to your need when it comes to uh, the monitoring of quality of partnerships. Uh, before I, I, I start, I want to... Um, introduce some, some um, elements that, that made us decide to, to, to start working on this. The first one is, is from quantity to quality. Ghent University was part of Erasmus from uh, 1987, so from the very start. And all those years we focused on quantity, more and more agreements, more and more students. At this moment we have 1,400 outgoing students uh, a year. Um, and we have uh, 700 partners all over the world, good for 1,800 partnerships. In terms of quantity, this is okay. But then, of course, there's also the question of quality. We also want to make sure that, we are, that, that, the, quality, that, that the partnerships are also of high standards in terms of quality. The return on investment. It was already mentioned this morning. That, that, that we need to do more with less means. Uh, so uh, the whole administrative uh, procedures and, 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 and um, capabilities, um, managing this large amount of partnerships, it's also uh, something to take into account. Choices. Do we work together with all institutions that, that want to make an agreement? Or, and, and if we need to renew our um, agreement, do we just say yes, we sign a new agreement and don't uh, care about what happens on this agreement or, or if students are happy or incoming students or um, from a certain quality. Uh, so we need to make choices. Excellence. This is something, of course, that's very popular at the <laughs> university leadership uh, level. Uh, they want to have excellence in terms of research, in terms of education, but also in terms of international partners. There's also a, a tendency towards more preferential partners, strategic partnerships, and this tool is also an, an, an answer on that need. But before we get started, what makes a good partner good? And I want you to maybe say what, what is, in your opinion, elements that, that make a good partner a good partner? So I don't know if, if anybody has suggestions about this. Good communication, that's one thing that we need to take into account when we are uh, working on a tool that's about the quality of partnerships. Um, 
So, do you mean it to be more at institutional level, or, or <coughs> that it's not only one professor cooperating, but there's more professors involved and staff or students also involved in the cooperation? That is exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. Okay. Any other suggestions about what makes a good partner a good partner? Good results? Okay. Transparency? Um, it, it, it started from a mobility target, but as I explained, and uh, it was on the slide before, when we're looking for strategic partnerships, we don't only want to focus on mobility. We also need to take into account research collaboration and other, other things. So what, 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 what I will present is, is kind of, an, of a, a tool that tries to, to capture all those elements that, that were um, uh, brought up here by, by, by all of you. And, and this conference is about, about data um, and using data for policy. And I think this, this um, is, is kind of, of a good uh, illustration how it sometimes is within our university. Um, a lot of data is being collected, but nobody cares about the usability of this data. So this is, of course, the first uh, challenge, is making sure that the data we collect is, 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 is available and usable for using for policy or for data-informed policy. I'll, I'll give some examples of data that we collect at Ghent University, and probably most of you are, are having the same kind of, of figures. Um, this is, uh, for example, the number of uh, graduates uh, with an international experience. This is for the, the, the European uh, 2020 goal of 20% mobility by 2020. So at Ghent University, we already have 20.2% uh, of our graduates that are going abroad for at least three months or, or 15, 15 SDS credits. Now, when, when we started this exercise, monitoring this, this, this kind of figure, um, there was some mis misinterpretation. And they just said, OK, how many graduates do we, ha do we have? How many mobilities? But that's not the correct way of looking at it. You should look at your graduates, where they are in mobility in a certain academic year. So you, you need to, to, look, uh, to, to, to uh, capture uh, the fact that a certain uh, person is graduating, that he or she had a mobility. If not, you can't answer this question correctly, of course. Another one is incoming outgoing exchange students. It's a, it's a bit outdated. Um, so now we are already uh, above 1,000 um, incoming as well. Um, exchange balance. For me, this is an interesting one. Um, we can analyze, when it comes to, a, to an exchange agreement, how many incoming outgoing students do we have? And, and for example, for Spain, it's less or more imbalance. For France, we have way more outgoing students. For Poland, we have way more incoming students. This is aggregated at country level. Of course, we can also analyze it at institutional level. And at institutional level, we can use it for the quality assessment of our <laughs> partnerships. International students. Um, I think this is also interesting. You could expect to be a lot of exchanges that those students maybe come back for a PhD. From these figures, I'm not sure, because if you look at China, there's only a limited number of exchange students, but there's a very large population of PhD students. And the other way from Spain, a lot of exchange, but not so many PhD students. So that this, this is also what, what Melissa was talking about this morning. Uh, when, when you register, you should try to look in depth and, 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 and um, keep track of, of what's happening afterwards. The participation on agreements, and this uh, is showing a little bit the need at my university to have this kind of tool. We have, as I said, 1,800 agreements 
an Erasmus for each agreement we have a certain number of places. If you look at the participation rate, this is very low in my opinion. I hope that we can have more, and this is, uh, these are the faculties, so this is Ghent University, so a little bit um, under 20% of our places are actually taken. So this might be a problem. The quali uh, a qualitative analysis is, is the study success. So we are um, monitoring if we have an incoming student, how many credits do they take and how many credits do they actually achieve. And we, uh, now it's at country level, of course, and once again you can also do it at, at um, f uh, institutional level. And for example, Italy here is, is a very good example because here the average study success in Italy is, very, is not that good, let's say. But if you look at institutional level, some institutions are doing very well and some are do doing very bad. And this kind of information I want, I want to capture. Um, this, is, this is the data we have available. There's a lot of information out there, but how can we use it in a structural way? How, how can we make it com comparative to identify what makes a, a partner a good partner? And, and how uh, can, can we make the data accessible for staff involved in internationalization. That's also a question because we are analyzing all of this at the international office. I can of course make extensive reports of 200 pages for each faculty, but it costs me a lot of time and I'm not sure if the faculties will really read all this information. So we need, uh, we need to develop a kind of a tool for quality assessment of international cooperation, where we structurally measure the quality of cooperation. Um, and, and from the very beginning, we want this tool to be based on a limited number of indicators. Um, for example, with, with IMPI, you saw the list of indicators. This is very useful in its, um, in, uh, for, for the sake that they, are, that they made this kind of tool. And I think the, 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 the HEDA project is bringing it to the, to the next stage that you can really use it because if you have to go through 200 indicators, uh, I don't think a lot of institutions will, will really use it in, in this respect. Um, but what we from the very start said, okay, we want to have a limited number of indicators. Um, and uh, the, the workload for the staff involved should be limited as well. This didn't count for me. I had to do the work, but professors, students, we don't want them to have extra workload related to this tool. So we came up with Equotic, an online quality assessment tool for international cooperation, where we use data that we have available in order to have a limited number of indicators, and those indicators, we want to make them easy to read and interpret by, by writing reports, by giving the, the visual information um, for uh, the users. Equotic is the name of a tool, it's also the name of a project. It's funded by the Flemish government, um, and almost all, I should say, because uh, our big competitor isn't participating, Kaya Leuven, you may be, may be familiar with this institution, but almost all Flemish higher education institutions were involved in the process. And what we did was we, we, we analyzed at a Flemish level what data do we have available. We also have international test users, so we, we asked them, do you also have this information? In order to make a tool that is as performant as possible, not only in the context of Ghent University or in the context of the Flemish, gov or the Flemish higher education institutions, but also in terms of performance for, for Europe and beyond. Um, so our goal was to, to, to create an online peer assessment tool for quality and international cooperation. Now, we talked about quality, we talked about international cooperation, two aspects that are rather vague and complex. What is quality? What is international cooperation? And for us, we started thinking, okay, let's think about the definition for quality in international cooperation. And we came up with three elements. We have the quality of the partners. We have quality of information exchange. Communication was already mentioned. And we have impact of the cooperation. And that's also what you were referring to. Is it only mobility? Is it also research? So for, for, for me, this is all part of impact of the cooperation. And, and Given this, this, um, this definition, we started looking into our data sets. Um, and 
when, when we, we, we try to go from data to indicators, we had a certain number of parameters, of course. Um, is it relevant? We have data that's not relevant for international cooperation. For example, the number of, of, of um, graduates uh, that, that went on a mobility. For me, that's not relevant when I'm, talk when I'm talking about quality of international partners. Um, is it measurable? Very important because from the data, we go to scores, and that's what, what, what's written on the, on the last bullet on the slide. We want to, 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 to use our data to get scores on certain indicators. Um, another one is, um, is it a unique source of information? Maybe 10 data sets are telling all the same thing. So we needed to think about, okay, is it unique in its sort? And the last one that is very important, do we avoid a Matthew effect? Some indicators or, or the way you, you transfer data to the indicators might um, have, a, have an effect that, that other indicators are also um, getting uh, more important. And, and an example of it is, for example, uh, we, we, we will look at mobility, because I think that's an important thing to take into account if you're uh, talking about partnerships. Was there mobility with a certain institution? What we don't take into account is the number of students we exchanged. Why not? Because another in indicator is about involvement. How many departments, how many programs are involved? And of course, if I have an agreement with, for example, Kosh University, where 11 faculties are participating, it's more easy to have 20 students exchange each year. Whereas if our faculty of bioscience engineering uh, is working with this very specific institution that's only active in the field of bioengineering, of course, you can't compare those two if, if you're looking at absolute mobility numbers. That's why we, 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 we always kept in mind we don't want a certain um, indicator uh, to, to, to influence the, another one. And then we have the tool. Um, I might also skip the live part. Um, I'm quite confident that it's working, but when I look at the time, um, I might speed up a little bit. Um, so within our tool, we do have uh, data uploads based on Excel, Excel sheets. And I know this morning we, we, we discussed Excel sheets. There are some challenges, and I'm sure that we will um, c come across this challenge as well. But what I try to do is um, or what we try to do within this project is use existing templates as much as possible. For example, the first one, it's a student questionnaire. You're all familiar with Erasmus, I guess, or mo majority of, of you are. Uh, I guess you know Mobility Tool. Um, not so easy for the data upload. I hope at Equatic it will be more easy. Uh, but each uh, student going on an Erasmus exchange needs to fill out uh, the online participant report. And you can export this information. And when you export it, um, you can fully upload it in the tool. And we will only take some particular questions that we think are relevant out of it and store this in the database in order to um, use for the indicators. Because we use this questionnaire for some of our indicators. Those that we think are relevant for um, international cooperation. And this is what the result looks like. We have the indicators. You, if, if, if a certain indicator you think is not relevant for you, you can just uh, switch it off. Um, but the most important result for me is this. So this is a list of institutions with scores on each of the indicators. And at a very easy way, you can immediately see strengths or weaknesses in a certain cooperation. Of course, you need to have the background information about what's behind the indicators. For example, quality of students is the one we saw um, based on, on uh, country level, where we analy analyze the, the number of credits students take and the number they successfully achieve. And we also combine this with how many ECTS do they take per semester. Because we think it's important to also take that into account. If a student comes to Ghent University for one semester, only takes 15 credits and 100% study success, is it that good? Uh, within the European um, guidelines, um, we need to 
an exchange student needs to take 30 CTS per semester. So that's why we also want to monitor that. Uh, we, we do the same for our outgoing students. Those three are part of, uh, are, are coming from the student questionnaire from, from the participant report. So there's a question about support. There's questions about facilities. Um, students uh, get questions on, on the academic value of their experience. Um, before they go on the mobility, there is a question on the course catalog that they had the necessary information to complete their learning agreement. And that's again about the communication. How well do we cooperate? We need this information. And the, the, the more information is available, the more easy it is to, 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 to make up an, a learning agreement and the more easy it is afterwards in, in terms of, of administrative efforts. Because if you're familiar with, with making learning agreements, you know it's, it's a very tough process. And it will always be, of course. Exchange of mobility documents, it's, was it, there, there, there's a question, was it signed by the partner university? There's also a question in this, in this um, participant report on um, the transcript of records, that you receive it in time. Of course, all those elements are crucial for us if we talk about the quality of our partners. And in this particular um, uh, indicator, you see that the scores are rather low. That's because in Flanders, where we uh, discussed this, this, this uh, project and the indicators, we decided to also look at grading tables. We need grading tables in order to, in an easy way, uh, transfer or, or, or convert grades from a partner institution towards a grade in our own un university. That's why we look at institutions who use EGRACONS. You may be familiar with the tool EGRACONS. Um, this is a tool that, that, that's, that's meant for grade conversion. And if institutions upload their grading tables in this tool, half of the points is on the grading table, so then you will double the numbers. So those indicators are in place now. There are more indicators, the one on mobility. Uh, there's one on involvement, how, how broad, uh, broadly spread is the cooperation. We have one on, on projects uh, from the educational point of view, and we also want to look at research. Joint publications, joint research projects, um, joint PhDs, this kind of things we also want to take into account when talking about research. I still have three months to come, and then it, so those other indicators need to be in place, but, but we are already um, working on it, and, and uh, only the research one will probably be missing when we launch a tool in, in December. Um, so we went from data to scores. The next step is visualization. And of course, if you see this kind of figure, there, it's very clear that the exchange of mobility documents, there's still a weakness. Uh, the academic quality might be um, something to look, to, to, to look into. Um, and, and this kind of things we want to use. Um, there will be also reports where we explain how a certain score is a certain score. Uh, what's behind the indicators, and this is, this is for the uh, institutional user who doesn't have a clue about all the information behind the indicators. And so this is for the professors. Professors, if you ask them, and, and that's why I think it's more objectively than the meaning of a professor, if you ask an individual professor, how is the agreement, it will always be good. I think using data and confronting this professor with this data, he might have another insight, or he might say, but there was mobility, why, 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 why is this indicator lacking? Okay, then we know there's a problem with the registration, and then we can ask him to make sure that his students register. So this is the whole um, setup of Equatic. So the final goal is an online peer assessment tool, where we have the reports, and we can go to our partners and discuss the cooperation. For example, at the EIA conference, you have a lot of meetings with partners, and everything is well, and, and you, you have a nice chat. But if, if you can use the reports and you can address strengths and weaknesses in, in the cooperation, I think you have a more solid basis to discuss the cooperation. Um, there's a clear need for international partners. I think that, that, that's clear. 
we are assessing our partners, but we also want to prove, improve ourselves as an international partner. We also want to improve our own quality. And of course, if you talk about quality assurance, then you want to improve quality. And that's, that's what this tool is all about. We want to address the weaknesses. We want to improve weaknesses when talking to our partners. And that's, that's the whole setup. And that's why we need um, as many partners interested uh, as possible. And when it comes to the post-project phase, there, this, this, there, there, there will be a service fee. That's, that's uh, something, um, if, the, if the Flemish uh, funding um, is, isn't available anymore, we still need to, to, to um, pay for support. Um, there's the, the cost for servers, there's the cost of extra developments in terms of software. So there will be a cost for this tool. And I'm now thinking about 1,000 to 2,000 euro. It will depend on the number of users. The more users we have, the, more, the lower the price. Um, <coughs> we have a very bad economical model. We need all of you to use the tool in order to make it a success and to be uh, able to assess ourselves as well. So that's why I will always try to make the price as low as possible. Um, and there will be a free trial version. Um, so if institutions are, are interested in the tool, they can use the free trial version, um, try to, 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 to make the data templates, uh, try if it works for your institution, if it has interesting outcomes or not. Uh, so that's why we, we will work uh, with a free trial for one user. And if you are interested and think it's useful, then of course you can, you can purchase the, 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 the service because it's an online web-based tool. Um, what I haven't mentioned is the user management, but it's a little bit like, like uh, the HEDA tool, where at the institutional level you have one user who decides on users of its own institution. Um, at first, this will only be available for one. Of course, it's more interesting if you have your professors that have access that can read the reports and things like that. So this was um, my presentation. I don't know if you have any questions or that this might open discussion. Uh, on quality of international uh, partners and cooperation. Was there any discussion when selecting the indicators to include ranking of partners? Rankings is part, I, I haven't mentioned it, but it will be part of, of one of the indicators. Especially university leadership likes to look at rankings. What we have done within Ghent University, we developed it as a proof of concept in an Excel environment. There again, Excel. Um, and, and what was very interesting for me is that some institutions were very high in rankings, got a very good score in rankings, but when you looked, for example, at quality of students, not so good. So it gives a more nuanced view on rankings. And we take into account Times Higher Education, QS, and um, the Shanghai rank. Um, and only institutions that are mentioned in two of the three rankings, at least in top 500, will get a score in Aquatic. Uh, this, this is also to make it manageable. No, it's, it's only, and that's, that's what I was referring to uh, with, with the HEDA project as well, uh, you can consider it as being strategical information. So when I log in into the tool, I will only see indicators, reports based on my data. If you log in with your own institution in the tool, you will only see information from your own institution. The only thing we have, but that's of, of course from the specific situation in Flanders, is that we were funded by the Flemish government and that they also want to have some results from the tool. So um, with, with, with this group of Flemish higher education institutions, we will um, uh, agree on what kind of data the Flemish government can use. And it will merely be, uh, mostly be about reporting. Um, with a certain country or institution, how many Flemish institutions are working together, how many uh, research or, or educational project do we have. Uh, so that's also something that's possible at the national level, but then of course you need to have an agreement of all institutions from this specific uh, region or country <coughs> that the government can use it for this analysis. And um, 
within Flanders, there, there will be um, a, a contract, of course. Uh, each institution that will use Equotic, there will be a contract uh, where we will uh, talk about the data ownership, that it's still your data, that Ghent University can't see the analysis of the data. It will, of course, stored on data on our server. That's important to know, but it's just rough data. And the analysis won't never be available. Why do we need to store it on our server? Because the, the tool is working there. And because um, <coughs> if something goes wrong, we need to be able to manually, for example, delete a certain data set or, or, or interact with, with, with the database. What is your action if you found that a university has uh, lost When, when, when we first presented this at, uh, for a dean at a specific faculty, we, we were also able to like rank the institution based on our indicator scores, of course. If you aggregate the scores, you will have a ranking. And there, that, that's the part that you can use for strategic decision making. Strategic partnerships with specific institutions. Now, what will th this dean said, okay, very easy, give me the red mark. All those institutions, let's forget about them. We said, no, that's not what we want to do. We want to improve the quality. And of course, certain, for certain specific institutions, it might be the best solution to stop the agreement. But what we are, from a policy perspective, what we are gon going to do with this tool is every three years, we will revise. And if a certain threshold is not met, we will ask like, okay, now this should be approved by in three years time. If not, we need to rediscuss the agreement. So that's how we will process it. We won't say, okay, this is bad, and we, we stop an agreement. And it will always be the capacity of the faculty, of the, of the professors, to decide on, will we uh, keep cooperating with a certain institution? But there will be some accountability. They, they, they will need to, 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 if it's not going very well based on Equotic, they will need to have a very good uh, explanation for that. And even then we can say, okay, we, we, we keep cooperating. So that's, that's, that's how we will use it uh, within the daily practice on, of, of, of agreements. Uh, in any case, I think that uh, somehow you see you, you're talking about the, the how making the data on more objectivity, but on the other hand, the system to support the subjectivism, the subjectivism regarding the institution. For example, your university, an access through this tool, let's say Koch University, a very good partner. Mm -hmm. Another university in um, in the system could assess the Koch University as not so good partner. Mm -hmm. This would be the situation. It's perfectly it's possible. possible. Okay, so uh, if the data were somehow available, maybe, I don't know to whom, but uh, thinking about on the a larger scale. improvement. Mm -hmm. the improvement Exactly. I, I totally agree, but there's, there's this, the, the, the aspect of data ownership. Yeah. So that's a challenge. Of course, if all institutions participating in Equotic want to use it that way, we can agree on it and we can, we can build something on it. For now, the tool, when it will be available uh, in, in January, this will be how, it, how it's been done. But all the data is there. So it's just a matter of mindset, of culture, and then it's not that, that, that difficult from a technical perspective to aggregate uh, certain data at, at other um, <coughs> levels. Um, what you can also use it for, for example, is if, if, if Koch University approaches my university and I don't have an agreement with, with, with Koch, I can ask my colleagues from other Flemish institutions, hey, do you cooperate with Koch and can we, have, can we see the, the, the report? And it's up to them to decide yes or no. So if you can cooperate, and, and, and there's, there's, a common, um, there, 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 there's a common interest in, in, in using or sharing each other reports, or I can even give you access to my reports, it's up to me. You might not be a user from Ghent University, but if you, if, you, if you log in for my university, it's up to me to decide do you get access or not. So that's, that's something that needs to be ruled out between ourselves. But for now, the tool will only have um, 
will only take into account the own institution. And, and what's very important, I think, is the, the, the statistical relevance of the indicators. It's not yet implemented, but we will uh, make sure that, like, at the moment you have um, an indication of the observations, but there will also be uh, some graphical representation if you, if you go over the score um, for, from the, the statistical relevance from all of these uh, data. For example, when, it, when, it, when it's coming from a specific um, topic from the student questionnaire, it might be an average score, but if five students had a very bad score and five students gave a very good score. So this kind of information we want to capture with the graphical uh, visualization of the statistical relevance of each of the scores. But this is still work in progress. Uh, people from, from the statistical department, so I've, the, the, the scoring of each of the indicators is done by them. As you heard in the introduction, I'm a political scientist. I'm not, I'm not a, a data scientist. So there I, I have the support and, and, and the, the expertise of people who are like more um, experts in, in this kind of material. Do this on the institutional level or on the system level of all institutions? Institutional level. Because I was thinking now of the visualization, visualization of the, using the UMET. And somehow there is also the, the data are anonymized behind. Mm -hmm. So you can see uh, uh, the figures, the you could but you can't uh, mm. identify the institution. You could indeed, of course, if you have all this information available, you could, for the statistical relevance, you could indeed also take that into account. But at the moment, we only look at it from an institutional perspective, exactly. And all the um, regional university are in the system? Um, that's one of my challenges. It's the standardization of institutions. And you probably are all aware that, okay, we have Erasmus code, great. We use it within Europe, but as, far, as soon as we go beyond Erasmus, the standardization is a challenge. And there will be a list of institutions available in the tool, because if you upload data and the name doesn't match exactly the institution, there is a, a slightly a problem. So standardization of institutions is, and it's something I'm confronted with at, at, at several occasions in my job, but I don't think there will be a solution for that. Uh, I thought PIC was maybe the, the, so the participant uh, code for, from the European Commission when you participate in, in uh, Horizon 2020 or Erasmus Plus um, project, you need this PIC, uh, participant identification code. But then when we, did, when we talked to the European Commission, they said, yeah, no, it's not 100% reliable, uh, it changes over time, some institutions have two, so that's not our main source of, of unique identifier as well. So then it co we, we come back at, at, the at Andy's story from this morning, uh, standardization of institutions. But I, I don't see the solution for now. <laughs> Excuse me? ICT people use sometimes the, the web address as well, but still it's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's, an, it's a challenge, let's say. Mm -hmm. <laughs>